As we heard at the beginning of Mass, we uh, have our commitment weekend for our Archbishop's Catholic Appeal, and so we have a, a five-minute video, five-and-a-half-minute video that will be shown here shortly. Um, but before that, we can't pass by this gospel, this very powerful gospel, without a comment or two. Jesus says, love your enemies. This is the new law of the new and eternal covenant. No longer is it eye for an eye. And this is perhaps the most difficult commandment to fulfill. I remember many years ago, there was the story of these two uh, college students at Franciscan University who were brutally murdered in cold blood. And they, uh, they found the two other youths who had, who had done this terrible deed, and they're, they're both serving consecutive life sentences now. But the mother of one of the boys who was killed wrote, wrote about her experience and her, her difficulty in, in, in forgiveness. Uh, she, she was a, also a psychotherapist. And she writes, she says, in rage, I would kill them with my own hands. You know, this commandment is where we Christians differ from our Jewish and Muslim brothers and sisters and indeed every other human group. The Christian life means to live a higher life. And as members of Jesus' body, we are to live as he does. That's the invitation, that's the gift, and that's also our response. Jesus wants to shape us to be more and more into his likeness. And this is what it means to live at his level, to love our enemies. Because that is exactly what he did. You know, whenever we choose sin, we say to God, I am your enemy. What did the Lord do when the entire human race was his enemy? Did he take revenge? No. He loved us. He loved his enemies. And St. Paul writes in the letter to the Romans, God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And when we were crucifying the Lord of glory, what did he say? Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. His love turned his enemies into his children by forgiveness. Now, how is it possible to love our enemies? Left to ourselves, I would say it's not really possible. By ourselves, we will most likely resort to some sort of revenge, vindication, at least harbor a grudge or a hatred toward our enemy. The answer to the question of how is from St. Paul in our second reading. We are to become like the second Adam, that is, like our Lord Jesus. And it is his grace within us, the grace that he won for us on the cross, that allows us to live beyond what is possible at the human level and to begin to live the divine life. Grace is the divine power within us and enables human beings to do things that are normally, that normally we are not capable of doing, like forgiveness. And so loving our enemies does not mean to pretend that the person didn't hurt us. Right? What do we call that? We call that denial. Loving our enemies does not mean to let them continue to hurt us and walk all over us. We call that enabling. Because if we truly love someone, we don't want them to sin because sin also hurts them. And sometimes in life we have been hurt by others. And sometimes that hurt is very deep, especially when in physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. And though it's not our sin, our holding on to the hurt and the anger caused by that sin can cripple us in our walk for a deeper holiness. And so long as we are unable to forgive those evil acts committed against us, still have power over us. It is forgiveness that empties evil of its power. And what may help us in our path of forgiveness 
is remembering that forgiveness is an act of the will. It's not an emotion. That is, when I decide and I choose to forgive with my will, I can forgive that person even if emotionally I'm still angry at that person. Now what the Lord wants to do is he wants to integrate us deeply and with the power of his grace to actually let go of that anger and to let him fill us with his mercy and love in, in, in place of it. And so loving our neighbors and forgiving them is, is usually not something that's instantaneous. Sometimes it's step-by-step, step, incremental. And one of the things we can do if we find ourselves kind of blocked in our forgiveness, there's a few things that we can do to, to, to move more deeply into forgiveness. The first thing is, is to go to confession and stay close to the Lord in the, in the Blessed Sacrament. Why? Because the sacraments give sanctifying grace. And sometimes it's the confession of my inability to, to forgive that I actually receive the grace in order to start, start to hand it over. And of course, staying close to our Lord in the blessed sacrament of his, of his real presence of his body and blood, where he gives us, his, again, his own divine life. Part of that process, too, is that we need to acknowledge the truth, especially before the Lord in prayer. Forgiveness doesn't happen by ignoring the evil or pretending it didn't happen or squishing it down or... The, or the fact that I'm angry about it. But to acknowledge truthfully that something terrible happened. Something was wrong and it happened. And this leads to, to another step in our forgiveness. Is to be honest about the emotions that we have around that. Most often the, the, the emotion of anger. Because even righteous anger. When, when it doesn't move to forgiveness becomes a block in our spiritual path. It, beca it can become crippling. I found this a lot working uh, in post-abortion healing. So often the healing that happens, there's, there is a lot of anger around that. And one thing that, that uh, exercise that, that many have found very helpful, especially with stuff, the stuff that's really difficult to, to let go of, is, uh, is to make a list of the people that have made us angry in our life. Not, it's not a list you're going to show, that, show those people, but just kind of get it down in front of us, kind of objectify it. These are the people that, since have wronged me in my life, and I have a hard time forgiving. Then I may take one of those names and write a letter to that person, again, that I'm not going to show them, but it's the getting the anger out of our hearts onto the page that is something that's very powerful and helps us to begin to surrender the anger that is there. And then we may even take a further step and to verbalize that letter with somebody that we trust in private, a friend, a priest, a counselor. All those things can help to, to, to get out that impacted anger so that we can move to forgiveness. You know, the same mother in this article wrote, she says, I haven't yet forgiven the men who murdered my son. I'm not able to ha handle the anger all at once. Time and prayer, however, are changing things. Every day Christ provides me the strength and courage I need to turn my feelings of hatred and revenge into forgiveness. I am aware of the divine law that Christ gave us to follow. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. If there were ever a challenge to that law, this is it. Can I honestly fulfill that divine law now? No, I cannot. But I do believe that the divine law of love will prevail over even these circumstances. Jesus says, love your enemies. And with his grace, we can.